Well, hello there. And today I'm looking at the Pine Phone, which you can see on the table. Now, if you know what the Pine Phone is, the very first section will not be useful for you because I will first cover what it is and what it's meant to be. So, let's begin by indeed explaining what is the Pine Phone, what is this device meant to be doing, what is it, and you know, so on. So the Pine Phone is a Linux phone. Now there's a bunch of Linux ROMs for Android phones, of course, and Android 2 there are also Linux. But if you want to run these normal Linux distributions on, a, on an Android device, you need to use something called Halium. And that's, you know, not really the same as just running it natively with the mainline kernel. And uh, the Pine Phone is different in that it does indeed run main, mainline kernel. And other device the same thing is Librem 5. Of course, Librem 5 is way more expensive and uh, not that much better, but still, uh, I mean, in the respects, uh, I mean, the software is completely different in some ways, but the specs in themselves are not that different between these two. Anyway, the primary two like mainline Linux phones currently are Librem 5 and this Pine Phone. Now, this device costs some $150 if you are buying it, uh, well, the basic edition, but this version costs $200. Uh, it's a better version, basically. It has 3 gigabytes of RAM instead of 2, and it also comes with, like, uh, a dock thing, which is to connect it to your monitor and stuff. Although I haven't gotten any of the conversion stuff to even work on mine. I can get the keyboard and mouse working, which is convenient a lot of times, but I can't get it to connect the monitor. So, yeah. But I'll cover that more on that later down the line. So, basically, it's a Linux phone, and uh, that's the most important thing. One thing to note is it's a community run project, so. Pi64, the company that sells the hardware, only sells the phone. And the community makes the actual operating systems and the apps and all that stuff. Now, that means that devices cost as much as wood otherwise, and it also means that there's plenty of stuff to run on it. And it, of course, means that Pi64 is not responsible for the software quality, so, you know. If you don't like something about software, you can't go to Pine64 about it, because they are not the ones making it. So... I'll begin by looking at the hardware and move on software. So I'll go ahead and turn the screen up, and we can look at the actual hardware the dimensions and, you know... The functionality. So to begin with... Uh, there's the back. So it's plastic, it's... Not super cheap plastic, but it is plastic. Now, the buttons are also plastic, of course, inside, and the front is glass, as one might expect. Uh, there's a phone check and a charging port, standard stuff. St uh, charging port is USB-C, by the way, so if you have lots of USB-C stuff, then it's good. And USB-C is more durable and more convenient than micro USB anyway, because it goes in both ways, and it's, you know, just more durable connector. Now, as far as the uh, camera goes, once again, covered by glass, it's a completely garbage quality camera though, so don't expect much from it. And that's pretty much it. So, another thing is, you can open up the back. So, you need to point this corner, and it opens up quite easily. And you can see inside that there's, you know, your SIM and micro SD slots, and there's your battery and uh, whatnot. And then you can ask there's like pins, those six pins near the top. That there's gonna be accessories for that down the line that you can attach the phone. For instance, there's going to be the keyboard thing that you can use those for uh, that's launching later this year, I think. Uh according to Pi64 anyway, and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and uh put our case back on or our backpack on, it's not a case. Uh it's a back, but any case, let's do that. And also, uh, the corner is a bit, uh, well, crackly on my unit. 
And keep in mind, this is a product in development, so it might have small issues like a burn, like a one dead pixel or two dead pixels, or you know, some creaking somewhere. So some minor things might be there. It is not a finished product; it's a beta product. So do not expect a finished result. Do not expect a finished uh, polish uh, from it because that is not why it is not hardware, not software yet. Anyway. It is so probably going to be finished eventually, but for now it's not of complete quality. Let's put it that way. It is still in development. So it did come with screen protector, which you've probably seen already. Uh, it's enabled already. I have I have it on because better for durability. Uh, is it unpleasant in any way? You can see I'm currently running uh, this uh, something. This was great. This is called Bosch, and in my case, my distribution is something called post-market OS and the post edition. Now it did not come with this OS, it came with something different, but this is what I'm using currently. I will go through why I'm using this and uh, not something else uh, in a bit. So unlocking this, uh, it's very simple. I have not installed an actual app, so you can see post-market OS is very plain. It comes with a few apps here and there, you know, your clock app, your file manager, what's this, your camera, megapixels, your calculator app, which is well, calculator. Oh god, sir, I was coming off the screen in any case. Then Firefox, which is a browser. It's the desktop version of Firefox, by the way, so that's something. There's terminal app and text editor, uh, which doesn't work too well in my experience. Uh, pasting and copying doesn't really work in it. And, uh, you know, it's not optimal. But in any case, you can install other ones too if you want to. Then there's Tweaks app, which you can use to you know, like tweak a bunch of stuff we'll look at later. And then there's actually want I will I don't want to go through this too much. I'm just explaining the basics, but I'm not gonna go through the apps and stuff. Then there's like a welcome thing. You can probably delete it if you want. Uh, I haven't done so yet. Um, now one intriguing thing about this is that you can install operating systems on an SD card, so you can test them out that way. This current operating system is very much running on an SD card, not the internal storage. You can flash them into internal storage down the line, but for now mine is on an SD card, so. Uh, that's what I'm doing, uh, because I want this out. Currently, there's something called Mobian on my EMMC or the inbuilt search, but that one has problems, and here's top many. In any case, the software is varying, so I just want to go through my software experiences. So I first began... Okay, let's put this in there, so here we go. So I first began using what it came with, which is something called Vancero, and it's the uh, KD edition or the Plasma edition of uh, Manchero. That was the operating system. And uh, that one, I mean, I had positive impressions initially, you know. Uh, basically, this, it wasn't too slow. It was a bit slow, but it wasn't horrible. Like, it's totally usable for my basic use case anyway. And, you know... There were no major UI bugs or anything like that, and you know, it worked fine-ish. But then I started getting issues. The mobile data and the modem would, you know, go sleep every time my phone went to sleep, and it would take like eight or five minutes or something to wake back up after I woke the device up, and that's, you know, that's not any good. It's not acceptable, you know, it wouldn't work. So I wanted to try something else. And I moved on to, uh, well, I moved on to uh, Arch Linux, uh, the Forge edition of it, and I had issues with that too because uh, it was way faster because Forge is better than the Plasma speed. It wouldn't take so long to make, but it would still put the modem to sleep uh, when the phone went to sleep, which means I couldn't get text messages, I couldn't get phone calls, and that's of course a problem for the phone. So that didn't work. So I moved, and also it would cut out like during use as well. So it didn't work too well. So what did I do after that? I moved on to, uh, well, uh, something called Mobian, which will I currently have in storage as well. Now that one didn't have the cutting out randomly issue, it's also forced by the way, so same desktop environment. And um, once again, it worked most the same as Arch did, like UI wise and punctually. But it didn't have the issue of modem cutting out in the middle of, you know, doing things. However, it still had a suspension issue with the modem. And, of course, that meant they had to disable suspension. I didn't disable suspending. And that meant the phone had, like, two or three hours of battery life. 
and that's not enough for any of your stable use. So I had pretty much, I was able to run it for a few days though without problems, and that's why I have to install it. So backup then all works somewhat. So I moved on to training other things. I tried something called Postbrick DOS with something called AsxXMO. It's a very different UI. It's using like buttons and gestures, as in the phones, like uh, many volume buttons and stuff to navigate. And it worked fine where it did. The problem is, I, the guide they have linked to the mobile data and uh, you know the differing and stuff, that doesn't work. At least not on this one, not on my thing. Uh, they have basically two command, two sort of commands. One is for plasma, one is for push. There's nothing for like XML in that guide. The plasma one complained about a debug error, presumably because I was running plasma. And the voice command gave me a different error, which was saying it was a, it, the command was an invalid syntax. And I don't know the tools that are relevant here. I don't know what tools are meant to look like, so I have no clue what they're trying to do with the command. And thus, I can't really figure out the, you know, correct syntax for it yet anyway. So, since this case, I moved on something else, which was what I'm currently using. So, well... So, you know, post market OS, Fosh, uh, once again, it's Fosh, Fosh looks like this, uh, and it's post market OS. And uh, it seems my bottom bar disappeared. Perfect. Well, no, well, I'll just re get it uh, after uh, I put the password in wrong, damn it. And now you can see it's back again. <laughs> but yeah, there are some bugs like this in it. I'll discuss the bugs later down the line. Uh, once I should get back to, you know, the rest of my journey. Uh, but anyway, I had issues getting the hotspot to work with that, because I need the hotspot. So, that didn't work, uh, but I was able to get working later down the line. Uh, although, with some hacky things. But anyway, I, mo I moved into the water things, so I tried, uh, uh, well, I tried something called Ubuntu to Touch. That didn't really work. Uh, it... Uh, the stable branch had major graphical issues, the screen would get completely screwed and they would stay after booting and the OS is going to sell correctly itself. That's not a good sign, so I turned to the development branch, but the hotspot didn't work there, so you know, a wooden touch was out of the question. So, I uh, moved back, I tried Banchero, uh, this time the Fosh edition, I had the same issues as I had on the Arch uh, version of uh, Fosh, uh, didn't do well enough, you know, I can't have that. So, I moved on to, again, uh, into, you know, uh, the KD edition of PostMarket OS. That had some issues too, you know, the hotspot would work, mobile data won't work on that one at all. So, yeah, they didn't, uh, they didn't uh, go well for me. So, of course that did go, so I tried something called Sailfish, which I've used a different device before. That wouldn't go past a lock screen, so that wouldn't work at all. So I moved back into the first version of PostMarket OS, I made a bug report on their, on their like, issue tracker about not being able to get the mobile the differ, uh, differing working, and uh, well, it turns out it's an issue with the firewall. So I was able to get hotspot working, although USB differing is still, I haven't figured out. But the uh, Wi-Fi differing or the Wi-Fi hotspot does work, so I can now actually pass on. I can pass on the uh, details about uh, my, you know, I can pass on internet to my laptop, which is what I need to do. I know what matters, and I can suspend because it does have a suspension issue with the modem, and it mostly works. Now, what are bugs that remaining? Uh, sometimes the screen will flash. So if you like epilepsy, please do not get this phone like straight up. Uh, on, on occasions, the phone screen was flickering, like flickering really bad. Like, it's usable for me, but I mean, it's flickering a lot and uh, it will do that for a while. So, you don't. Um, if that's an issue for you, you don't want to get this phone. It's a bug that seems to happen on uh, on Fosh, on all these throws on Fosh. Uh, so, something to take note of. Then also, another force issue is that sometimes, uh, when you know, sometimes the screen would start turning gray for a bit. It would get, you know, sometimes it will like start really do something, anything, 
the screen will turn gray for a few seconds and then it'll be used again and then it's turned gray again and this continues for a bit but it only lasts for like 10 or 20 seconds and then this phenomenon is gone so it's not a ruined usability but it's a bug it's a pretty clear bug it's there so there's a lot of bugs in existence uh still particularly with Foster's graphical ones uh, i want to mention that but besides that it works fine uh, i have been able to use my day driver and i really like it you know i can use terminal uh, and you know do whatever the heck i want to the link system i can i'm not being spied on by my operating system i have control over it and you know although there are these bugs that exist it's working very well and you know i'm able to use the driver the battery life is good enough it's lasting me a day uh over a day uh on one charge if nothing else and that's totally fine so what are my overall thoughts uh on this it's good you know it's it's fine it's better than i thought it was going to be and i can use today drummer you know i can use it every day but it has some bugs uh if you want a phone that you know utilizes a lot of you know you know ask you whatever the hell you want with it that um you know runs linux you know you know, works towards the development of mobile Linux, and uh, it's just, you know, overall a very cool concept, in my opinion, a very free device, and whatnot, then it is perfect, but it is, but if you're somebody who, you know, wants a very polished product, you want something that, you know, runs very fast, with fast hardware, you know, doesn't have bugs in it, at all, uh, something that you don't have to spend time on to get working, then they sent it. You will have to probably try a few different distros to find what works for you. And you will have, you know, it will have some bugs on it. So it's not very polished. Uh, the hardware is quite slow. Like you can be get better for $50 Android phone in terms of playing hardware speed. Uh, but it's fine if you just want to use your phone regularly. And, uh, you know, it works. And if this concept is something interesting, you know, if you want something controllable, then it's still good, I think. And I would recommend going for it. And especially now, especially if you're in the EU, they now ship it from the EU, from Poland. So you won't have to worry about, the, you know, messing with customs yourself. And, you know, why not? Because it's actually coming from the EU. And the shipping, of course, is fairly quick. I got mine like a week and a half-ish. So, you know, it's really not bad with that. And, uh, you know... If it's something interests you, go for it. Uh, if you just want the phone and you don't care about the OS, you don't care about the whole free and open source thing, you don't care about controlling your device, then I don't see much reason for this to be compelling. The real benefit of this is, you know, if you want that Linux, if you want control, if you want the customization, if you want the choice, and if you want, you know, not to be spied on, things like that, this is going to be perfect. Another thing I forgot to mention is if you open the backup, there's a bunch of, you know, small uh, switches up here. They are very, very tiny. They are tinier in, in reality than they look on the pictures, so they are really, really small. You can't reach them with them with fingers, uh, or you can, but it's going to be hard to move them with fingernails. They are really, really small. Uh, but, you know, move them with a toothpick or, uh, like, some sort of a uh, sharp thing. Uh, not something too hard, of course, you don't want to scratch these things and damage them, but, you know, some plastic thing uh, or uh, wooden toothpick or something. Just move it with that and uh, what it does is to actually disable or enable some hardware. So you can turn off the modem if you want to use that. Uh, you can turn off the cameras, you can turn off the mo you know, mobile data, you can turn off the so on. You can turn off the Wi-Fi, you can turn off lots of things, basically. And uh, that, of course, means turning those off means, you know, the actual hardware is usable. So, just that additional privacy feature if it's something of interest to you. Uh, I disable a bunch of things I don't use myself just because why not. And another useful thing I forgot to mention is if it's my, what a device to tinker with. You want, like, a Linux ARM device you want to mess with, like, it's fun. You don't necessarily want something to use your door, but just want to, you know, start experiment with something. This thing's really cool, uh, you know, it's very worth it for just something to mess with and something to play with, in my opinion, if you like this kind of thing. But yeah, if you want something for day driver, uh, depends on your needs and use case. Uh, with that way, I'll stop this here. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, have a nice day.